What's going on guys? National Master James Canton III here with Chess.com and today we have Game of the Day with Legends of Chess. With the white pieces we have Grandmaster Vladimir Kramnik and with the black pieces we have Grandmaster Magnus Carlsen. Now the name of this video is When You Must Win Against Magnus Carlsen. So you know this one is going to get crazy. Let's get right into it. Vladimir Kramnik chooses E4. Magnus says C5. Let's just get right into it and go for a dynamic game. Not sure what Sicilian he's going to play, but let's see. After Knight F3, D6 is happening. D4, Pawn takes and Knight takes. Very simple here. This is just regular Sicilian theory. We have many ways that we can proceed here as black. And Magnus chooses Knight F6, attacking the E4 pawn and developing at the same time. White develops and defends at the same time. Very basic stuff here that you would see in any opening. Now, after knight to c3, we have this interesting move that make that actually makes this a very popular opening at this point, which is the Nidorf Sicilian, the Rolls Royce of uh, Sicilians. They say here is actually uh, one of the best and sharpest ways to play against uh, against e4. One e4 is the Nidorf variation of a Sicilian playing a6. Bobby Fischer loved it. Gary Kasparov loved it. Of course, Magnus loves it too. And now, with that being said, Vladimir Kramnik says I must win against Magnus. So what is the best test to these Sicilian variations like this? He chooses bishop to c4. This is now the Sozin variation of the Sicilian. A very aggressive option to choose for white here. We are sacrificing material here on e6 at certain parts of the game and it's very scary for the person that does not know what to do or has never even seen the sacrifice that happens with uh, with the bishop on e6, sometimes even the knight, or with the pawn on e6, knight d5 comes in and we're just sacrificing a piece for a positional edge, sometimes even tactical. It depends on what happens. So you have to be very, very, very sharp here. And you need to know what you're doing with the black pieces here. Now, of course, Magnus knows what to do when he plays b5. He's just going to attack the bishop. And actually, we're not even playing. We're, we're kind of playing a flexible Nidorf. But the actual name of this opening right now is the Seveningen variation of the Sicilian. So something different. And you expect it to see e6 or something else. But this one's a little bit more flexible. Just attacking the bishop already. And if the king e often castles to the queen side, we already have our pawn storm looking good here. Queen c8 or rook c8 is coming in Nidorf fashion. And we're doing excellent. After b5, bishop to b3. Now, a lot of times this bishop defends this side of the board here so casting queen side he could be okay but he does have to watch out for a5 a4 ideas eventually black says e6 and now we're just going to make sure this bishop is not as good as it was last move it's just hitting f7 it feels good and we know that in a sozin variation he's going to sacrifice here if we do something like knight b to d7 so we need to be extremely careful on what we do here now after e6 vladimir kramnik plays bishop to e3 just developing here guys we got to get the pieces all um, off the back rank and we have to develop them this is just how it goes bishop to e3 and bishop to e7 very common queen to e2 and now he's like which way are we going to go are we going left are we going to right are we casting king side are we casting queen side we don't really know yet and black just says you know what i'm just going to castle i don't know what you're doing yet but we're just going to castle because we kind of have to and especially in the sojin variation guys if you're ever playing against the sojin variation of the sicilian you do want to castle you definitely want to castle because of this e6 pawn being a weakness here and he understands that now after we have castles kramnik plays f3 just showing the flexibility still in castling and also somehow in a way kind of setting up a yugoslav attack here but that usually happens with g6 and bishop g7 and a bishop being able to come down over into this uh territory on h6 and actually uh take the bishop on g7 h4 h5 it's going to be some type of checkmate somehow some way and the king is, is just here in the center of the board he doesn't tell where he's going yet black plays queen to c7 and i'm just going to aim I'm going to aim here. I still need to develop, but at the same time, it's kind of like a flexible development. I'm not telling you where I'm going yet. I'm not telling you how I'm doing things yet. I'm just going to play queen c7 and see what happens here. After queen to c7, white plays g4 here. Very aggressive. He must win, right, guys? So he has to play the aggression here. He has to really just throw his pieces at Magnus and hope that they hit him as hard as they can. g4 is the move here. Now he's going for h4, h5, g5, g6, and just try to blow open a position. The king might stay in the center because if we castle queen side, there could be b4 and maybe a5, a4. But at the same time, the attack is it's not even as strong as it looks right now for the black pieces because Whitehead just has a lot of pieces around the king and he's defending quite well. So this is definitely a scary move, but let's see what happens. 
After g4, black plays knight to c6, understanding that I need to develop. This knight's extremely strong here on d4, and trading pieces definitely helps black in all Sicilians usually. So after knight to c6, we have a capture and a capture, and then g5 happens. Now, actually, g5 might have been slightly premature because of the option of knight h5, which, of course, Vladimir Kramnik did see knight h5. And also, he knows that knight to d7 is a move as well, but the engine just slightly liked h4 a little bit more, and usually in these kind of positions, h4, h5, then g5 could happen because it el eliminates knight h5 and you can play g6 at one point and just kind of break open the king side here but he did choose g5 black goes with knight to d7 the best move to make here because it's just the most flexible knight h5 we don't even have a square to go to it just kind of looks good knight d7 actually has intention to it so after knight to d7 h4 there it is he's like i need to mate magnus Today is mate Magnus, h4, h5, g6, and he's going at him. Let's see how Magnus responds. Knight to c5, and then h5 from Vladimir Kramnik here. He's getting close. It's getting very scary, and then Magnus just says, you know what? Rook b8, show me what you got here. Rook to b8, what a move here, because this is very scary. h6 or g6 is definitely coming, is right in the realm here, and after rook to b8, he goes for it. He says, g6, I'm going to play it. It's going to happen. And after g6 happens, we could capture it, or we could not, but, uh, you know, it's kind of scary to capture it. It just depends on what we do here. He actually chooses h6 in this variation, and after h6, now white responds with knight to d Five. What a move here, guys. Knight to d5, right here in the center of the board. As we said before in these Sozin variations of the Sicilian, a knight on d5 is very, very strong. It's a position of sacrifice that can happen. And if you come back and look at this right now, I mean, look at this position. h6 happens, and we can capture here, but knight to d5 is what he chooses, guys. He's going for Magnus. He says he has to win this game. The title of this is How to Win Against Magnus. So he said knight d5 over all moves here. I mean, what a shocker here. Now, of course, if we put this in the engine, they don't like it as much. But knight to d5 is a very scary move to look at. Your tactics need to be on point, and you need to be very sharp here. So after knight d5, we have e takes d5, bishop takes d5, and then we have queen to e8. One of the scariest positions in the world, it seems like here. Now, of course, when you have when you play white or in air, any color, white or black here, um, in these kind of positions with attacking chess, you do need multiple pieces. And the more pieces you have, the better it's just going to be for you. Now, here we have maybe the bishop, the pawn, and the rook. But we also need to figure out what our black's defense is. And if black can defend this, this just won't won't work out. So let's see how he responds. Queen to e8. Because he needs to figure out where his bishop, where his queen's going to go. And he's also going to take this if pawn takes. You just take back with the rook. If bishop takes, then we go up some material. A decisive material loss here will be for white. So he needs to go for it. What do you think he did here, guys? White to move. What would you do here in a must-win situation against Magnus? Raise your hand if you say resign. That's totally fine. Number two, actually, if you didn't say that, it was actually bishop takes h6. Bishop takes h6. Wow. He is going for it. He is trying to throw everything he's learned through even the world championship and winning it himself. Bishop takes h6 is a move here. What a move. I would be scared for my life at this point. Bishop takes h6. You need to be very accurate with your calculations or it is over. And so he does take it. He says, show me what you got here. G takes h6. I'm going to take the material if you're going to give it to me. Rook to g1. It does work at this point. And now most people here would move the king, the g7 or h8. If you would move your king, raise your hand. Totally fine. You're not the only one. But the problem here, it loses in both ways. After king h8, g7 is immediate here. And then I'm just getting some material back. Maybe it's not technically losing because we're up material, I think. But the problem is that g7, we just don't want to give him this counterplay. And even worse is king to g7 because after pawn takes, there's a discovery and then you lose the queen on top of that and we still have some material but i don't think it's enough to say that we're even better here as black now what he chooses here is after rook to g1 guys interesting little in-between move here bishop h4 check just see what he does you know what just throw the check in there king to d1 and after king d1 now it, it's revealed why the bishop is actually here as well is queen to e5 we centralize the queen the queen's looking good here if pawn takes on f7 we just run to h8 we've taken over the dark squares your king is on d1 which means you're actually down if we do a piece count here one two three four versus one two three four five six we are up two pieces at this point and because this one is out of the game we're actually up 
three pieces, decisive material loss if you can't find a checkmate in two moves here. After queen e5, c3 happens. This is not going to do it for us, guys. c3, we're down two pieces, basically three with this one being out of the game here. This is a must-win situation. What's going to happen? So Magnus plays bishop e6. I'm fully developed. I'm up two pieces. f4 happens. He says, I have to go for it. f4 is his last try. And after f4, Magnus takes it. Queen takes f4. G takes f7 check. And then king takes h7. And then Vladimir Kramnik resigns. Wow. He was supposed to win. Must win situation. And this is what happens. This is the this is where you don't want to be, guys. This this kind of this where where Vladimir Kramnik was, he was in a position that he didn't want to want to be in. Like you never want to be in a situation where you have to win against Magnus. And this is where he was here. He had his, he had to win against Magnus, running through the game again. He tried the Sozin variation, which is very aggressive, very aggressive here. Then we have b5, and we turn it into the Sheveningen variation. And then e6, bishop b3. We do some developing as we should in every opening here. Trade a few pieces off. He's going for the king's side attack. And we're just going to subtly just move our pieces around. Let him let him attack us. With what? It's almost like we just let him swing at us. And then when we're ready, when he's ready, when he's done swinging, we start swinging back. Rook to B8, G6, H6, Knight to D5. What a move. This would scare all of us, most likely, unless you do some, definitely some calculation to this. But this is definitely a scary move, especially against Vladimir Kramnik himself. But of course, Magnus being Magnus, this is not as scary. But it is a scary move. Knight to D5. E takes, Bishop takes, Queen to E8. Very nice move here. Bishop takes h6, just sacrificing his whole house, everything he has. He's trying to uh, destroy Magnus here. He has to win in this situation. Bishop h4 check, this nice in-between intermediate move that helps us get our queen to the beautiful square here and centralize the queen, which now it just covers everything. It covers everything. It attacks. It defends. Also, this is a main threat. Oh, my goodness. That's why c3 had to be played. c3, and now you can't even... I mean, this is nothing. Bishop e6, we're developed. f4, we capture. He tries for it. Nothing works. And in a must-win situation, Vladimir Kramnik goes down to the world champion, Magnus Carlsen. What a game here today, guys. Never put yourself in a situation where you have to win against Magnus. I'm National Master James Canty III, and this is Chess.com and Game of the Day. I'll see you guys on the next video.